Hi everyone, this is Tanishka and this is my astro forecast for the approaching new moon in Leo. So depending on where, which side you are of the dateline, that's either July 31st, for those of you in New York, LA, uh, for those of you in Australia, New Zealand, that is the 1st of August. So interesting, it's happening, um, you know, within the three days of a seasonal chakra, a seasonal three-day vortice of accelerated growth, which for those of us um, in the Southern Hemisphere is Imolk, the halfway point between the winter solstice and the spring equinox. And for those of you in the Northern Hemisphere, that's Lugnasid, so the first um, harvest festival halfway between summer solstice and spring equinox. So even though we're now out of those eclipses, which were a real shake up for most of us, um, you know, it's not like we can just sit and relax. It's like, no, this is, you know, another big whirly gig to accelerate our growth. But the good news for those in the Southern Hemisphere, this is a time of aha moments, a time of the light entering into the dark cave of winter. So, you know, if there's issues that you've been grappling with, um, then illumination will come. For those of you in the Northern Hemisphere journeying the um, uh, into late summer, now coming into autumn, Lugnasid is a time of doing a bit of a review and an inventory and saying, okay, did I like the harvest? Yeah, that was the sum of my choices and expectations. And if I didn't, how am I going to do things differently? So it's very much a taking stock, responsibility. It's kind of the end of the party festival summer season and a time to kind of regroup. So let's specifically get into looking at the new moon influences now. This new moon uh, happens at 8.36 degrees in Leo. So a lot of astrologers kind of round that up to nine degrees Leo. So you may want to have a look at what you've got sitting in your natal chart, your birth astrology chart. You can get a free one at astro.com if you've got anything around the nine degree mark in Leo, then yeah, this could be a fairly intense time. Um, but the good news is Leo is, you know, the sign of optimism, of courage, of creativity, play, joy. So after those intense eclipses and eclipses take us to the extremes, okay? So we had a solar, total solar eclipse followed by a partial lunar eclipse. And so they take us to the extreme masculine feminine and take us, you know, way off balance in a sense so that then we can come back now and integrate what we learned from those experiences. So this is a real time of returning to a sense of feeling brighter and more optimistic about the future um, as we come into this new moon. So at new moon, we have sun and moon conjunct. So in other words, from our vantage point on earth, they appear to be on top of each other, but it's when, you know, they're, they're close. And so, you know, new moon is a time as that lunar energy wanes down to its darkest uh, light that we are often more contemplative, that we feel more internal. It's a time of going to ground and considering what lessons we learnt, um, you know, since the last new moon over this lunar month. So, you know, be gentle with yourselves this week as we approach this new moon. Conserve your energy. Be discerning about what situations and people drain you and, just, you know, act accordingly. Make choices that are self-honouring accordingly. Um, and new moon... Once we get to the exact new moon, so July 31st, August 1st, this is when whatever we speak has a much greater impact because new moon is the time of seeding intention. If you think about, you know, in the womb, the seeding, um, you know, in that dark, vast space, this is the time of new moon. So it's very important. We're very mindful of what we speak, okay? Knowing that manifestation happens in three 
stages, thought, word, deed. So this particular new moon is especially so because Mercury, which is currently retrograde, so the planet of communication appearing as if it's moving backwards from where we are on Earth, which again is wonderful for reviewing, okay? But it will go stationary before moving forwards or appearing to move forwards direct exactly at new moon. So when a planet is stationary, its energy is amplified. So, you know, the power of word is especially important this new moon. So just if you do say anything that is self-negating or projecting your fears and worries on the future, I recommend just saying I take it out of the law. Um, law being universal law, the law of attraction, yeah, that we manifest to us that which we speak, that which we focus upon and imbue with truth. So, um, fortunately, Leo New Moon is a time when it's easier to feel optimistic, and this is a wonderful time to be doing um, affirmations and gratitude practices. So if we think about Leo, Leo is governed by the sun, all right? And we all have a spark of the sun within us. That's the divine spark within our heart, okay? And so when we have the sun transiting through Leo as it is, but joined by the moon, <clears throat> it amplifies this energy and it brings up for us, am I sharing my light with the world? Yeah? Or if I'm not, why is that? And for all the Leos that I've known, what I've observed in them is that it's their greatest lesson to believe in their own gifts, to believe that their essence is worth sharing and to put their light out in the world on the understanding that when we all share our divine spark, we light up the world. And the world is currently eclipsed by darkness by fear, by, you know, endemic trauma, creating expectations of war and separation. So the more of us that go within and find the wisdom of the heart and everybody has a jigsaw piece that is equal and the more we put that out there, the more, you know, we, we light up um, this age of darkness that we're emerging from. So Leo, if we're not um, believing in ourselves, believing in our gifts, that inner sun implodes like a dark star, a black hole. And so we can suffer a real crisis in confidence, a crisis in belief in ourselves. So um, the archetypal energy, those of you that follow me know that's kind of my specialty, archetypal astrology. What is that? Well, it's looking at the fact that these spheres, the planets, the asteroids, they each have an energy and a signature that evokes different psychological aspects within us, within the world soul. So for Leo, that's the archetypal king or queen, one who is sacred and sovereign. Now the word sovereign means king or queen. It's somebody who is unto themselves, in other words, they look to their heart to guide them, to lead them, rather than deferring their authority to an external authority figure. So um, this is an opportunity, this new moon, if you have given your power away, if you have deferred it, whether that's to a group mind, like a you know, peer group or a church, or um, whether that's to an external being, like a parent or a teacher, or a partner, this is a time to reclaim sovereignty. So um, there was a lovely quote from the uh, musician Jean-Paul Wabatai from uh, Zaire. And he said, when the sun shines, we shine. And when the sun don't shine, we shine. And I think that sums up Leo beautifully, bless him. So um, this, uh, new moon that we're approaching is asking us to identify how do we play small okay 
how do we diminish our light, whether that's by putting ourselves down or by not taking risks um, or by, yeah, just not sharing our creative energy in an attempt to not attract negative attention, criticism, judgments. It might be that, you know, you don't wear flamboyant clothes. I notice a lot of women when they come here to Ubud, they're far more expressive with their feminine energy. They dress like divas, like queens. And when I speak to women that are visiting here, you know, we all agree that it feels safe here. The way that men look at women here um, is through the windows of the soul. And so women then feel safe if they're not being looked at as a prospective um, uh, conquest, you know, or a chattel, you know, a commodity, something to be um, seduced or bought and sold, then we feel safe to, to blossom, to flower, to shine. And so, you know, People often diminish themselves if they don't feel they can speak up on their own behalf and set appropriate boundaries and call people on their shadow. So just consider how do you play small um, for fear that you can't cope with what being big, what living life large could attract. And, um, you know, the irony is, the more that we diminish ourselves because we live in a holographic multiverse, the more we attract people that will diminish us. Whereas when we do dare to shine our light and live large, we're more likely to be celebrated for it. Um, and, you know, for those of us, I mean, you'll hear my Australian accent that grew up in Australia. We have a group mind that's been bought out of being a convict uh, settlement and so we have what's called the tall poppy syndrome. So there's a fear of sticking your head up, sticking your neck out and being shot down uh, for getting above your station, being too big for your boots, um, for being big. So, you know, for those in Australia, this is um, a, a wonderful time to go right. I'm not going to be unconsciously manipulated by that fear of being shot down if I'm really seen because ultimately when we're seen we feel loved so uh and on that you know leo is such a loving sign it's very demonstrative very affectionate like a big putty tat yeah it's you know the lion so very tactile and you know has big grandiose uh gestures okay will will surprise their beloved with you know um wonderful experiences and gifts to, to demonstrate how much they appreciate them. So, you know, this is likely to be a time of great romance if you dare take a risk on looking like a fool for love. Um, so the uh, challenge is for us to claim our own inner mantle of queendom or kingship. Um, by daring to do or to create rather the vision that's in our heart, our deepest desires, what it is our heart is guiding us to do through inspiration, the word inspiration meaning in spirit. And we're never given a vision that we can't do. Okay, so sure, it might seem overwhelming, but one step at a time and, and we create it. So, um, you know, it's about love transcending fear. So if we drop down into the solar plexus, into duality, then we can go more into the mental body and worry about what people will think. Whereas if we are centered in the heart, okay, which is what Leo asks us to do, then we just are compelled to act upon what our heart wants. Yeah. So um, this is also the energy of the entrepreneur. Okay. So you know, Leo is a fire sign. If we think about in the tarot, the wands suit, the fire uh, family, so to speak. These are the aspect within all of us, regardless of whether you're born, you know, during a fire sign transit or not. This is an opportunity to go, okay, what excites me? What 
enthuses my creative juices, you know, what gets me fired up because then we're more likely to move forwards on taking a risk, investing in our own talents, ideas and skills. If we don't do that, the shadow of this sort of fire sign is that we get a rise. We entertain ourselves by poking others, yeah, and making them frustrated or angry. And this is, you know, a really destructive use of that creative fire energy. Another destructive use of it is, um, you know, substances that, give you an experience, give you a high, make life bigger, but of course then whoo, uh, make life much harder as well, you know, extremes. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, for those of you that have an idea that is burning away at you, this is a wonderful time to seed it, to make the commitment to pursue it um, because, you know, we are here to each um, make what we love doing our sacred service, make love visible, as Kahilga Brown said. So, you know, when we work in uh, the private sector, whether that's in corporate or in government, there's so many rules and regulations and red tape that change happens at a much slower rate. Whereas when we're, um, you know, self-employed, we can just act upon what it is that we really want to do. So, you know, if you are thinking, oh, I wouldn't mind going it alone and, and you know, um, pursuing that which excites you, this is a great time. Um, now, this is beautiful. We have not just the sun, which represents the masculine energy, and the moon, which represents the feminine energy in Leo, this new moon, as is always the case they're always in the same sign at new moon but we also have venus at four degrees uh, leo and mars at 19 degrees so we have the sphere that governs the feminine expression and the sphere that governs the masculine expression helping and amplifying the energies of sun and moon so if we think about leo being governed by the heart, this is a beautiful opportunity for feminine masculine to come together in the heart from a place of centeredness, yeah? Adult to adult, mature. This is the place of inner mother, inner father archetypally. So if someone hasn't activated these um, archetypes, the inner child, the inner teenager is unconsciously running them. And I've got a free uh, video tutorial on my website called Living in the Heart, which explains that in a lot more detail if you're called to watch it. So this is a beautiful opportunity for feminine and masculine to come together and to walk shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand, and to lead and grow a vision together in a spirit of cooperation. Because what we've seen in the old paradigm of the empires of patriarchy is it was only the masculine that was afforded positions of status and external power and the woman was relegated more to the home or behind the scenes, you know, um, or the low, pill, uh, low paid service sectors uh, or unpaid work. And so prior to patriarchy, there was a king of the land who was male and a spiritual leader of the people who was female and they worked together. And so, you know, if we look at politics, for instance, it's, you know, there's way more men in politics despite there being 52% women on, on the earth. So, you know, women are not being represented, but we're going to see perhaps a lot of women this new moon going, hmm, maybe I should run for public office, you know, or women and men coming together to go, right, let's, let's create something on the understanding that just like the opposing energetic polarities of feminine and masculine are what create all of nature, okay, that 
if we want to create something that's truly sustainable and that flourishes and thrives, then it does need the input of both the masculine and the feminine energies, qualities and strengths. So, um, yeah, this is also um, a time when we're likely to experience sudden change because we have Uranus, the planet of the new age, the Aquarian age, because Uranus um, governs Aquarius, but it's the planet of Kundalini, of awakening, of time to wake up, the age of light. Um, if we think about Uranus, um, you know, it is, um, like I said, the rule of Aquarius, I meant to say Aquarius, the glyph is energy. So this is asking us, with it forming a 90 degree angle, a square, which is a challenging aspect. So Uranus is forming a square to the sun and moon, this new moon. And it's in Taurus, okay? So Taurus is about, you know, what we value, all right? So it's forming a square to sun, moon, Venus and Mars, these are the inner planets, the personal planets. So if we look at our birth chart, where these inner planets are what really colors and informs our personal personality, okay? Whereas the outer planets, the slow moving planets, they're more generational positions, okay? So we are being personally challenged, this new moon, to... Um, look at how we're using our energy, whether it's creative or destructive, whether we're rebelling with or without a cause, okay, for the sake of rebellion, to be different, to try and prove, you know, that we exist in our own right, or are we using our energy for the greater good? Um, <clears throat> Uranus is also challenging us to find true strength. So if we think about Leo, in the shadow, it's very egoic. Yeah, me, 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 I want to shine and bugger anybody else. But the mature Leo has learnt to tame the ego. So that in the tarot is the card of strength. Now in the Rider Waite deck, we see the temperance angel cajoling, patting, and taming the ego as the lion. Whereas in the mythic deck, we see Hercules, you know, wrestling the lion, which shows the difference between the soulful way and the egoic way to uh, harness the ego. So this is an opportunity. This, As we come into New Moon, a lot of us, myself included, are really getting some home truths about the impact of our ego. So what's our ego? Well, it's the immature, wounded child teenager within all of us. Doesn't matter how old we are, we still got one of them on board. So, you know, um, this is a time when we're likely to get some aha moments into, oh, I'm doing that and it's hurting other people or it's sabotaging me and I'm doing it unconsciously through compulsive behaviors because of my unresolved, unhealed core wounds as a child. So this is a wonderful opportunity to be challenged, okay, and look at the cost of our egoic behavior. So what's egoic? It's thinking we're better than anybody else, you know, going into superiority, um, into extreme individualism, independence, um, just, you know, my way or the highway sort of thinking. So ultimately, we all just want to stay safe. That's what the wounded part of us wants. So um, this is an opportunity to see where we're stopping love. Yeah, love is light. Okay, so uh, through not being more humble. Um, and so Uranus being in the sign of Taurus, um, we're being challenged to act now in accordance with what our heart's true values are, rather than 
chasing what the ego chases, which is money, status, popularity, power, you know, wealth, all the external trappings. Now, we also have Chiron, the planetoid, um, halfway in size between a planet and asteroid, um, forming a trine aspect to this uh, new moon and the sun. Now, a trine is a very harmonious aspect. It's like being given a leg up. And Chiron um, is the sphere of light that evokes our deepest core wounds to be healed. So these are the wounds that are compromising our ability to live from the heart, compromising our fullest potential. And Chiron is, is in Aries at the moment. So this is the child the child in all of us. So this is an opportunity for healing on a deeper level with our inner child. So a great time to schedule a healing um, and a great time to, you know, acknowledge if you're feeling vulnerable, if you need someone to hold space for you, um, you know, if you need, uh, whether that's a friend or a counsellor, but to feel the pain of your inner child. Because if we don't, we armor up like the warrior, which is another aspect of Aries, sometimes called the god of war. And we anticipate a fight. We anticipate a struggle. And so inadvertently, we create one wherever we go because we've got this big chip on our shoulder. <clears throat> so um, a wonderful opportunity for healing this new moon. Now, the other tidbit of info I came across um, haphazardly yesterday and that is yesterday, July 25th, was the Mayan day out of time. So um, the day between the galactic year finishing and the new galactic year starting. So a portal when we can feel the veils are thinner, it's a great time for downloads, when our ancestors can communicate to us how to heal the core wounds that we've inherited through the genetic imprint and our cellular memory, but also, you know, through the modeling of our parents. So today, as I record this, it is July 26. It is the start of the new galactic year um, and a very auspicious date. So you might, I'm not a Mayan calendar expert, good God, no, far from it. So you might want to Google that for more info about that. But, um, you know, this is certainly a time for healing the heart. Um, we still have mercury in cancer. And, um, you know, that is a beautiful opportunity for heart sharing, for deep empathy, for sharing our emotional pain and for holding a really safe and compassionate space for each other. So, um, you know, this is a time for us to soften and to um share deeply from a humble heart so there can be um, mutual healing so i hope that's beneficial for you if you find it helpful you do have my blessing to share this um, and i wish you all the best this new moon and um yeah may we heal together so i'll just stop the recording there we go Blessings.